Hi, I'm Marty Javlo, America's dental technology coach. What we're going to be doing today is what, Dana? Talking about technology. Okay. okay. So, a lot of times I will go into dental offices and the doctors ask me, how should I pick out the right Ima dent digital image software or the, dent the best um, x-ray x-rays to pick out maybe you could give our dentists the top three steps that they should take to um, help them pick out the right imaging uh, software. software and, and, hardware. and hardware exactly okay. the first thing that you need to do is make sure you have the proper infrastructure in place that means we need to have computers network everything in place because if you don't have it then it becomes a very difficult thing where you may have a laptop that you're lugging from room to room and it's not real efficient. And it also prevents you from going to the next step which ultimately is the chartless office. From there, you have the infrastructure in place and then you're gonna to wanna to pick the hardware. And the hardware is something that it depends what you're looking for. We have sensors, we have phosphor plates, but it's gonna be driven by what the office wants. So you need to get staff involvement here. You're going to get diagnostic images from all of these modalities. You're going to get a little bit faster and sharper pictures from a sensor compared to a phosphor plate. But in many cases, the phosphor plate is for the office who just wants to get into it. Staff doesn't have to learn anything new. It's basically a digital developer, as I like to call it. So you can put it even in the dark room. It's just something you can do. Then, the last part is, you demo it in your office. You want to shoot the images with your own x-ray heads to see, are those images as good as the ones that the salesperson shows you? And then your staff has to be on board. Because, like anything else, if your staff isn't part of the answers here, you could totally have problems because they don't want to do it. In my office, we went for about, we thought, a month to transition from analog to digital years ago. The light bulbs went off and it took less than two weeks oh, good. because they knew that this was making their life much easier. So you had them on board from the very beginning. We tried. Good. So. Good points. So infrastructure, demo it in your office, and get your team involved. Absolutely. Great, great. So another thing that the doctors, that I have a hard time with doctors with, uh, one of the challenging issues when I, because I help offices go chartless, paperless, it's one of the major things that I do, and the doctors have a hard time having confidence in their backup protocol, they worry about their server going down. Maybe you could give our doctors that are listening um, a little bit about your take on that, because you've been through it for quite a We've while. We've been chartless for, well, for a number of years. And we, our backup routines have changed as technology changed. In the beginning, there was no cloud. We didn't put things on the internet. So it was always uh, started off zip drives, floppy drives, all of these things that we had to use. And then it was hard drives, backing up around the office. I even originally had it backing up to my house with a virtual private network just in case, it, because we always want to make sure there is a copy of the data off-site but now I've simplified that whole thing okay I have a backup server that takes images of my re real server every uh, few hours wow. so 30 times a day we have an image of that server that can be reconstructed should my server go down in 10 minutes I can be using the backup server then the backup server pushes everything up onto the internet into the cloud and stored remotely. So I'm no longer worried about grabbing the hard drives, having a laptop, which I don't recommend anybody put t putting the backup on their laptop because they get stolen, and pulling them out of, my out of the office. There's always a copy out of my office. Multiple locations, it's just the safest way to do it now. Now, in your office, are you in charge of the backup protocol, or have you delegated that to a techie or a technical person in your practice, like your office manager or something? Right now, the backup protocol is entirely automated. Oh. It requires no human intervention. But does somebody check it? Do you do a, a sample get... restore every once in a while? Instead, previously, I always would say verification is only as good as it says right. you have to do a restore. What happens is every single day, 
I get two emails. Okay. One that shows the log of what's happened, and I get a bootable screenshot of the server. Great. That says, if something happened, this will boot. Okay. Not only do I get that, the service that I'm using, LibTac Dental, gets that also. Okay. So if they see a problem, they can inform me, but I should be looking to. Great points, great points. So if our audience wanted to get in touch with you, maybe have you come in and do a consultation or eval in their practice, how can they get a hold of you? Get a hold of me, go to my website, www.dentaltechnologycoach.com. I also wanted to mention that Marty does a, a little blog or a I video have, blog. I have a, a thing called take5withmarty.com, right. which is just dental information. We do that twice a month. You can get it at take5withmarty.com, spell five any way you want or yep. the number. And I have a blog, just Google me and you'll yeah. find it. Great information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dana.